All right, good day, everybody. This is Michael Winnegar. And tonight, oh my goodness, we got an international speaker. I'm excited. And uh, I want to go over the, I want to do this. I wanted Todd to be on this on this call um, or hear this part. Because I want to, guys, we made some announcements on Tuesday. And we did something that I think has, ne well, I don't even think, I know has never, ever been done truly in the history of this industry. And uh and we did three launches on on Tuesday night. And this is this was insane. And we're watching this stuff going crazy right now. So let's go over these launches because I want to see what Todd thinks about this as well. So what we did is we well, we did an incentive launch basically, which a lot of companies do, where we basically say if you get yourself on a recurring order, you know, every you know, every three months, right? What happens? You're going to get a voucher where you can get something for the company, half price. You can give it off as a gift or anything like that. And that, you know, is something that a lot of companies do. That's one of the things that we added. But these next two things has never been added to a company. And that is in typical <clears throat> direct sales or networking or whatever the home-based businesses, you work and you're, and, and they might have a promotion for, you know, four weeks, five, six weeks, we're doing ours for eight weeks, where if you do all this stuff, whatever that might be, you're going to bring in this many people and have this much volume and do all these things, you win a trip. And usually you'll see maybe eh, 10, 20 couples win a trip. And that's about it. And a lot of people just, just don't even participate because they think I don't even have, I don't have the skill set to even win that trip. So they just keep on building and doing their thing. And then, and then some of the leaders go absolutely crazy and they win a trip. So we thought as a company, what if we reverse that whole equation? And how do we do that? Real simply, when, when a person comes into uh, Asante Organics, they got a lot of different ways they can choose to come into the business. Now, we do have some packages that are specifically designed for um, your 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 needs, like your uh, the things that you do, if you want to do alkalizing, we got an alkalizing package. If you want to try all the products, we got that package. So they range and they're called Go Green Packs. Go Green Packs are built to bring you value. So it's a one-time purchase on a Go Green Pack when a person enters and comes into the company, right? So we said this, how about this? Why don't we do this a little bit differently for the, from now or Tuesday or the beginning of this month, we're going to, we're going to you know, make it retroactive all the way until October 31st. Anybody you bring into this company with a Go Green Pack, so they range from $199 up to $499 for the largest, but any there's a few of them in between, you know, based on your desires. But I'm going to tell you, every single solitary person that comes into the business and they purchase a Go Green Pack, they get a free trip. We give them airfare for two, two airfares and hotels included, they get a trip in their package. 28 different destinations. Now, I'm going to tell you what, it's good for two years. And that's pretty slick because you know what? Now you, you got a free trip and you can take it whenever you want. Maybe, you know, you wait six months a year and you're like, hey, let's get out of here. Boom. You just book it. And you got all your airfare covered and your rooms. I think that's absolutely huge. But here comes the, here comes the second part of this. For the people that are that are enrolling new people into Asante Organics, every time you bring three people into the business, you get a trip. So you bring in three, you get a trip. Remember, it's good for two years. Bring in another three, you get another trip. We just keep adding the trips up. So somebody could literally, and, and we saw this happen when we launched this. Somebody brand new came into the company, got their trip in their package, and immediately within an hour brought three people in and got another trip. And they're working on the second one now. And these vouchers, you can use them for a lot of different things. You could use them for, you could, you could give it away to maybe family members or give it as a gift, or you could, you know, uh, use it yourself or use it as an incentive program. But oh my goodness, where have you seen a company that that everybody qualifies? And they're just coming in and they get the trip right in the same right in the same package that they're purchasing. So it's like not only are you getting a trip, 
it's like almost you get like free products, right? And good ones because they're all USDA certified organic, 100% chemical free and 100% toxic free. But with that, we got a special guest speaker tonight. And um, <clears throat> wow, he's an international icon when it comes to speaking. He's, he's been all over the world. Not only has he been a really successful networker, and, and, but he's been an uh, uh, but he's been an extreme, extremely successful uh, trainer for all different companies. All he does is he travels and he's all around the world. But I'm telling you, he packs out, you know, huge places and he teaches you how to do this business. And I, I've not found a guy that can teach you an easier way of, of becoming successful than Mr. Todd Falcone. So I'm going to give you the stage. What do you think of that promotion? Man? What do you think of that? I think that's pretty slick, huh? Well, I mean, honestly, I thought you misspoke when you said the airfare was included. Did you misspeak? <laughs> no. Airfare, that, hotel rooms, buy the kit, that, a trip. That is like insane. So I, like I seriously, I was like, did did he just say the airfare is included? Because, you know, I mean, you can acquire trips where you get hotel stays, but I've never heard it with airfare included. So that's wild. Yeah. That's it. I mean, what? A, first of all, I mean, the opportunity you guys are all in is already amazing. You wouldn't even be here if you didn't think so. But uh, to be able to have that as an incentive when it comes to recruiting, I think is... Like if you're not taking full advantage of that and just seeing how many trips you can personally earn and and allow uh, your new people that come in with go green packs to take advantage of, I think you're you're missing out on a, I mean, uh, literally like a one to me that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I've li like I mean companies do incentives all the time, but I've never heard of an incentive um, where airfare is included. So that's that is truly wild. So. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about making money in this business. That's my favorite subject. So uh, hopefully, it's uh, one of your favorite subjects as well. I think you guys are all here because you are uh, in the business and wanting to grow the business. Uh, I did a training for you guys uh, about a month or so ago, and it was kind of a. Uh, I think the the I don't I don't remember what the what the title was, but it was like basically you know how to how to thrive and survive in network marketing. I'm going to laser this one in. And really focus on the recruiting and prospecting side of the business. Like, how do you how do you get really good at that side of the business? Because here's the thing you have to understand first and foremost: like, the only way to the money in this business is you have to be able to get customers, and you've got to be able to recruit new distributors. Honestly, there's nothing else that matters. You, how pretty your Instagram pages, your reels are, your stories, your Facebook, this, your Twitter account, none of that stuff matters. I mean, that's fine. Um, you know, you might use that from a lead generation standpoint or a content, you know, distribution standpoint, but flipping rocks over and asking people to take a look, that is the name of the game. And really nothing else matters. Even and like, Look, I've been around network marketing for 35 years uh, and I've been in it the entire time. So it's not like I took some hiatus for any time. Like I've been in it since August of 1989. So pretty long time. And yeah, things have changed uh, from the perspective of tools that we have, the bells and whistles. I mean, we used to do paper applications and in-home presentations and be, you know, business opportunity presentations and briefings and you know, now we've got zooms and videos and look, I mean, like this is, this is wild. Like my lips are moving and you can see them moving and it's live, man. And if you got, if your camera was on, I'm seeing you live. Like how crazy is the zoom thing? Right. I mean, technology has, has really helped us from a connection standpoint and it's made the game easier. I think it's made the game a little bit harder too, because there's more distractions. Like people can get so distracted by, scrolling through their phone and looking for stuff. But um, when I first got introduced to network marketing, like the day before and even the day of actually, until I walked into the room, uh, I actually thought I was going to a job interview. Like the, the, I don't always tell this story, but like when I first got introduced to network marketing, I got a phone call. I was graduating out of the marketing department at Long Beach State and I was looking for a job. And I had gone through career fair and a couple of interviews and this guy called me and he said, hey, my name's Jim. I'm with Orange County Marketing Group or a marketing company. We're looking for people that can train and manage others in the expansion of our company. And we want to talk to you. And what's crazy about that is that is literally word for word what that dude said to me 35 years ago. How in the heck can I possibly remember that? I mean, think about it. Like, so you can't remember something said to you yesterday. 
And I, re I remember that because that, that first business opportunity meeting, that changed the entire trajectory of my life. Like, I didn't even know multi-level marketing, network marketing existed. Like, I, up, up until that point, when I walked in the meeting, it, it did not exist on planet Earth. It was around, but I didn't know it existed. And at some point in your life, you found out about network marketing, right? Now you're here. Maybe you did another company before. Maybe this is your first one. I don't know. But when I came in, I looked at it and like, I looked at it with like a clean slate, not like with a, you know, oh, my aunt tried one of those, didn't work for her, a friend. My friend does all these things. He never makes money in them. So now I have an opinion about it, even though it's like, I, I'd never had personal experience. I mean, it, I was green, clean. I love that it was green because that's perfect for you guys, right? Green, clean, and naive. And But what I saw was, hey, here's this product that makes sense. How many of you guys think that your product makes sense? Like, duh, right? Clean, organic, toxic-free, like all that stuff has got to make sense to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. So I was, this is, I remember sitting there, I was like, okay, this product makes sense. And then I heard no boss. I've never liked having a boss. So I've, that ding, ding, ding in my mind. And then you can make money by retailing this product. And there was, a, I felt that there was a need, there was definitely a need for that product at the time. It was a water filtration company I started with in 1989 and dirty water in LA. So it made sense to me. And then you could build a team and you could earn a percentage on everything that that team does. And there's no limit to the size of your team. And I thought, wow, this is brilliant. Like, I'm, I don't think I did this, but like, if I did it today, I'd be like, you guys are, we're all doing this, right? Like, because there's like 70 people in the room, right? And I'm pretty confident not all, probably most of the people didn't see it. I saw it and I went, okay, this makes sense to me. This is, this is brilliant. Like conceptually, the, the, the concept of network marketing made sense to me because I didn't have opinions. I didn't have, um, any kind of prior, anything, any, any baggage. And so when I started that journey, I was hungry. I'm still hungry. I was hungry for knowledge. I wanted to know how to do it. And so like when I train, I'm very straightforward with the way my style of training. Now, if I'm on a platform and I don't even know, I have no idea by the way, what's gonna come out of my mouth tonight. So, cause I don't have notes or I don't have a slide deck. But uh, when I train it, I like, I, I just tell it bluntly like it is like, you know, that's the way I wanted it. Like, you don't need to fluff it up for me and add cream cheese to it, make it look all soft and sweet. Just tell me what the heck I got to do to make this thing work. And so that's the way I train. I typically, especially on a platform, like a physical platform on stage, it's like half comedy and all training. So I don't know how co comedic I'm going to be tonight. We'll see what I end up saying. But um, so yeah. I, I was seeking answers. And you guys probably wouldn't be here if you weren't how seeking it? answers. I didn't even taste it. To see if it needed so, salt or anything. Somebody get that mute for me, thanks. Um, so I wanted to know how, how do you make money in this business? And you know, we're, we get started with a memory jogger, write down all these names, and here's a basic script. And you know, you need to go out there and start introducing people to the business. And so I started to do that, and I stunk at this business when I started. I was a stuttering, sweaty, nervous wreck. Uh, I was 22. Uh, pretty much everybody that I was prospecting was older than me. I had this seed planted in my head that, man, if, you, if you're older than me, then you must know more. Uh, you must, I don't know. I just felt like I was intimidated by people that were older than me. And so I got really nervous when I got on the phone. I mean, so nervous, so bad. Like I remember talking to this one guy, you know, if you get really nervous, your mouth gets all dry. I don't know if that happens to you, but all of a sudden your palms get sweaty and your mouth just, just dries like a freaking desert. And then like you're talking and your mouth is like click, clack, clickety clack. And it's even worse on a microphone. Like it's one thing to be talking to somebody on the phone. This guy, who, this prospect I was on the phone with, he's like, dude, he's like, I'm like, what? He's like, can you do me a favor and just take a drink of water? And I'm like, because you're, I can tell your mouth is so dry and it's irritating me. And I was like, so embarrassed. Right? So I was like, wait a minute. So I ran down to got, got a drink. From that point forward, I like, I mean, even this, I'm always drinking water, but I always like had water on my desk because I even, you know, I, I didn't want people to know that I was nervous. And so let me just be straight with you guys. Like when you start this, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be nervous at it. And that's okay. Like, like my kid um, who's done this with many things, but uh, fishing, for example, I love to fish and I've taught both of my kids how to fish. And I remember taking my youngest one fly fishing and 
throwing a fly rod is very difficult. Okay. It's not the same thing as like a spinning rod, you know, with weight on it. It's like even as a good fisherman, throwing a fly rod ain't easy. And he's crying and he's like, dad, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. And he's like in tears. And I'm like, buddy, you've never done this before. Like, how can you? And he's like, I don't know, probably 10 at the time. Like, you can't expect to be good at something that you've never done before. And we finally, it was interesting. I finally got, you know, got, was getting him with enough rhythm to get this fly out in this lake. And he hooked a pretty good sized trout. And all of a sudden his, I mean, his attitude changed, big smile on his face, got a picture with the fish. And I share that story with you because it's the same thing here in, in network marketing, you know, like the, the phrase, and I don't remember if I said this last time or not, but like a phrase has been thrown around for a long time. Like how, you, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And, but that, you know, I heard that and it, and it's, and that, that phrase has been perpetuated quite a bit, but it's not true because you see billionaires that are fat and unhealthy. And then you see physically fit, ripped people that have no, like, have no discipline in business. So it's not true how you do one thing is how you do everything. But what is true is how you get good at one thing is how you get good at everything. So I want you to think about some things real quick. I hope you're taking notes because I'm going to give you, I'm going to get, I'm going to give you some, I'll just say it, it's work. I'll give you a little bit of work. I mean, there's nothing, nothing wrong with a little, you know, honest work, right? So some, what are the, some of the activities that we do in network marketing? Um, inviting, okay? Write that word down, inviting, uh, presenting, following up, uh, addressing questions, overcoming objections, closing, enrolling. Um, maybe I'll just leave, leave the uh, items for, uh, I mean, I mean under, under the umbrella of prospecting and recruiting for tonight, um, lead generation or making new connections. So let's say, you, you know, and don't, I'm not going to repeat them, but like just whatever ones you were able to write down, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in those areas. You don't have to do it right now, but sometime tonight, do that. Like, give yourself an honest rating, one to 10. One, I'm terrible. 10, I'm the best. And then under each one, just in your journal, go, okay, well, how could I, how can I get, let's take follow-up, for example. How can I get better at follow-up? And see if you can come up with your own answers. Like, how could I get, how could I improve my follow-up skills? How could I improve my inviting skills? How could I improve my closing skills? Uh, you know, and let, and I don't know that I would give myself a 10 in any of the categories because there's always room for improvement. I'd probably give myself a nine on many of those, but there's always room for improvement. And then it's, I got to go nine to 9.1 to 9.2, 9.22. I don't know. All right. So, but, uh, you know, if you're, if you're giving yourself like, and be brutally honest with yourself, you don't need to share this with anybody, but this is like one you know, this is, a, this is a pathway to you improving. Like you have to understand there's two, two decisions you can make here. First of all, if you're not prospecting, you'll never make money in this business. So if you're drawing a zero every day, when it comes to invites, you'll, you'll never make money in this business. You've got to get past that. You've got to get uh, past the fears. I actually run a 12 week accountability program that I've been doing since uh, 2008, which is designed specifically to get people who are stuck into action. I may mention that at the tail end of today because a lot of people get into this business, they have a distributor ID number, but they never do anything. I mean, you probably have people on your team possibly that have joined the business, but they've never done anything. And, and it's frustrating, right? It's like, well, you know, they say that they want to make money. They say they want to be successful, but then they let their fears get in the way. And their, their fears of being judged or what if they don't like me anymore? What if they aren't my friend anymore? All the what ifs that we fill our heads with. And this is a big, big time mindset game. It's a confidence game. So how do we develop confidence? And I, I do recall, I, I think I said this a, a few weeks ago, there is, you have to understand there's a direct correlation between competence, that's skill level or ability, and confidence. If you have low skill or low ability, you're going to have low confidence relative to that activity. So if we're looking at prospecting, if you, if you think you're terrible at inviting and you're, you have very little confidence with like picking up the phone and saying, hey man, I just launched this business. I'm super excited about it. I'd love to show you what I'm up to. And not only that, like if you decide to join, you can win a free trip, airfare included. It's super cool. You wanna watch this video or whatever you guys do to introduce people, right? If, 
if you're if you've got a lot of fear or you and you're lacking in confidence, you're not going to do that very, very important activity. And so what you've got to decide to do is get honest with yourself and be like, okay, well, how bad do I want it? How bad do I want to succeed in this business? I wanted to succeed so badly in this business that I spent two years and made no money. Zero after two years. I had, and, and I'm not a dude that came in and sat around for two years. I hustled for two years. And how demeaning is that? To it's one thing to sit there and you know I've I've been bobbing around in the ocean in the, of the business but doing nothing. I don't deserve to have gotten any results after two years. But I showed up every day. I prospected every day. I was at every briefing, every meeting, every Saturday training, and to have nothing to show for it. People all around me were quitting. What? Why didn't I quit? I still don't know why. I think it's a combination of things. If that guy can do it I, one of these days, I'm gonna, if she can do it one of these days, I'm going to get this figured out. I know people are making money here. I've got to figure this out. I don't want to have to you know, do the normal pathway that most people are doing. I see the potential. I see the possibility here. Uh, maybe naivete. I don't know. There's a combination of things. But like, while people all around me were quitting, I stuck to it. Now, granted, I, I ran out of money because I was a 22, at this point, 24-year-old kid. Uh, ran out of money, creditors chasing me. My mom's like, hey, I told you that thing didn't work, right? She, she thought I was in a cult. Uh, and so she's like, why don't you come up to Monterey and take a job at the radio station? And I had to go through something called consumer credit counseling where you cut up all your credit cards and you pay a monthly bill to pay down your debt, which ruined my credit rating, which I didn't have any credit back then anyhow. And I took a job at their family, my, the family's radio station as an account executive, selling advertising, never sold advertising before in my life. But I came to that radio station and in 10 months, I was like the number two earning account executive in that market. Why? Because I had a different attitude. I had a di different set of principles. I had a different mindset than I had the entrepreneurial drive and the entrepreneurial mindset. I showed up earlier. I stayed later. I prospected more. But, I, you know, it, it took me a while to figure it out. And it may take you a little while to figure it out, but but you know, like probably every book about success says that the only one of the only ways for you to fail is for you to quit. Like, you know, statistically, 12 months from now, half of you won't be here. I mean, God willing, you're here on planet Earth, but half of you will not be in this business. And that's because you chose to bow out. Now, again, I told you already, I'm blunt. I'm very straightforward. That's those are the numbers. That's that's the reality. And I'm not going to uh, have you, you know, show me your face and say which one of you it's going to be because you don't know what you don't even know if it. You're like you're all saying no, it ain't me, man. It's not me, Todd. I'm I'm going to be here, but some of you won't be. So just remember what the heck I just said. If you're swearing up and down, no, I'm here. I'm in it. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not quitting this business. Write it down in your journal right now that you said that when I, when I challenged you and I challenged your thinking. And when you give up six months from now, just remember I told you so. But you don't have to. You can plant your flag right now and say, I have decided I'm going to do until, which is exactly what I did. And until doesn't, there's no date. I mean, it could take you three months, six months, could take you two years. It was four years before I heard, hit my first $10,000 monthly check in network marketing. Four years. Uh, I mean, four years? Like, like, and let me just tell you, uh, network marketing, both as a, tr as a distributor and as a trainer, has been very, very good to me. And the freedom, the, the choices that being successful in this business provides is like nothing else. I mean, I'm flying across the country to go to, or across the, the globe to go to Australia, and I'm sitting next to a dude that works for Microsoft, and this guy's going over there, and he's like, I'm like, well, what are you, I'm doing meetings, I'm like, oh, how long are you there, I'm there for seven days, I'm like, you have meetings the whole time, yeah, I go, we have meetings like 10 hours a day for six days, I get a half a day to play, he goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going over there to speak for about 90 minutes, and then I'm going to spend a week playing. Which is totally different. Like the, when I travel, when I do like corporate travel is so different than network marketing travel. I want you guys to, to get it going right. But you have to decide that you want to get good. So I also want you to think about this. Like, what are you really good at? I mean, all of you guys are good at something. Maybe you're a great 
I mean, I'm a mediocre guitarist. You see the guitars in the background. My kid, my kids are both better than me at, at playing music. I can play. I'm not going to do it for you right now. But if I wanted to get really good at the guitar, what would I do? I would have my hands on the guitar every single day. I would take guitar lessons. I would study other guitarists. I would be on YouTube, like looking at different chord progressions and whatever. I would be, I would, I would have, I would, I would practice daily. My kid Joey is on his guitar every single day. He takes lessons. It's the same thing here. I mean, how did you get good at whatever you're good at? You, you're good at something. Maybe you're good at many things, but you didn't just instantly get good at that. I mean, maybe you're a good singer and you had a, God gifted you with a naturally good voice. Didn't, didn't get, I did not get that. I am not going to sing for you. I, I can speak, but I certainly cannot hold a tune. Maybe I could, if I took lessons, I could probably be a decent, but, but some people just naturally have that gift, but that gift needs to be honed. Somebody who was gifted with this amazing voice, they don't become amazing singers until they've honed that craft. It's like, okay, those of you that are uh, um, that, where I can see you, I see a handful of you. How many of you that I can see on, on video uh, played any sport growing up? Any kind of sport, okay? Whether you, okay, that's everybody. But you never had practice, right? You didn't have practice before softball, baseball, tennis, swimming, whatever. You never went to practice. You just showed up at the soccer field on Saturday and chased the ball around like a bunch of six-year-olds. I don't know if you ever, any of you have kids, but little kids playing soccer is hilarious because it's, there's a soccer ball and 20 kids like a hive chasing the soccer ball. And then over time you learn, you know, ball separation and player separation. And you learn that through practice. My question to you is how much time are you spending practicing this business? So how do you get good at stuff? Well, like my kid fishing, you can't get good at the thing that you never do. So you have to realize like, I might suck at this for a while, but I, got, I still got to do it. The thing about network marketing is we don't, this isn't like going to law school or going to medical school and you have to get all this education and then you can finally practice. You get to practice right now. So you might not be good right now, but that's okay. And, and it's, it's fine to be honest with people say, look, man, I'm, I, don't, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing in this business, Amy. I just got started. It's literally my first day. I'm probably going to blow it with you, but I'm super excited about this company, what they're doing with these products. They're giving away free trips. So I don't even, I mean, I, I don't know how they do it, but hey, I'm excited. I'd love to show you what this business is all about. I have no idea whether you're open or not, but if I say you this, would you take a look at this? I mean, what's wrong with being real with people? Rather than trying to act like the pro that you're not, I mean, it's one thing to be like, you know, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Like, you know, in the book, ten, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, I, 10, 000, Malcolm Gladwell, in one of his books, talks about mastering a craft, like takes you 10,000 hours. I've got easily 10,000 hours in network marketing. I'm pretty good at it at this point. But when I started in the business, I'm not trying to act like I'm the pro. It's better to act like you're the new person when you're new. And most people don't do that. They try to like, you know, posture themselves into being the professional that they're not yet. We, we want to develop you into a professional. You get good by learning through your experiences. One of the things like, you know, whether, whether you're, you know, messaging somebody on Facebook or picking up the phone and calling them or text messaging them or whatever, however you're communicating with them, it's good to pay attention. Like if it's a phone call, you should be recording a cross section of your calls. You can go Google how to record phone calls on your iPhone. There's apps that you can download. And you can learn from listening to that. Or maybe you have a sponsor that has more experience than you. I can tell you right now that, that if you were to give me recordings of you talking to prospects, there are things that I'm going to pick up on that you're not going to pick up on. This is, I'm like, if you're committed to, to, to getting good, that first of all, you have to decide that for, first and foremost, because you can either like you can you can stay sucky in this business and you'll probably get some results just by putting numbers up on the board. But if, if you and I were in a, a recruiting challenge, I'm going to smoke you. And the reason I'm going to smoke you, number one, is because I'm probably better than you are. And number two, I'm probably going to outwork you. So if, but like if, if we did the exact amount of calorie output, the exact amount of work and you're new and I'm not, I'm, I'm definitely going to smoke you. So why would you want to stay where you are? If, if, if it's like, you know, Stephen Covey says, 
in the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's a great story. Uh, let me share that. If you've never read this book, there's a story. This guy is walking through the woods and he comes across this lumberjack. He stumbles across this lumberjack. And he's watching this lumberjack and he's using this big manual saw and he's trying to saw this tree down. He's watching the guy and he's making no progress. And the lumberjack is just exasperated and is sweating. And like he's like not even cutting into this tree. And he comes up and he taps on the lumberjack's shoulder and he says, hey, man. And then he's like, what? <laughs> you know, the guy's exhausted. And he's like, I can't, I can't help but notice. I've been watching you. And there's no teeth on your saw. And the guy just keeps on sawing. And, and and he goes, oh, I'm just too busy sawing to sharpen my saw. Do you guys get that? You don't want to be too busy sawing to sharpen your saw. You want to take the time to hone your craft. How, do you think I could get good at the guitar just by looking at it on my wall? No, I can't get good at it. I have to have it in my hands. Remember the first time my kid picked up one of my guitars? He has like eight of them now. I mean, he's got an amazing guitar collection. And nice guitars. He's got like four Martins. I mean, he's got a bunch of really good guitars. The first time he tried to do a G chord, he couldn't even finger a G chord. Like, I mean, it did, like he couldn't even make it sound like a G. Now he's got, he does all these weird jazzy stuff that I can't even do. My kid loves jazz. Both my kids love jazz. But again, it's like, take it into network marketing. Um, okay, if I want to get good, I want you to think about tonight when you get done with me, Okay, how did I get so good at whatever this thing is? Well, I did this, this, and this. Those items that you wrote down that you rated yourself on a scale of one to 10, I want you to think for you, how can I get good at these things? And write down, like, how could, well, you know, I could probably find some videos on that, or I could follow some people that are better than me on, on that, or, you know, I could ask some questions from an individual that's more skilled than me in that arena. Uh, maybe I could do it a little bit and just see how you know, I feel with it. And, and maybe I could I could record some of my stuff and listen to it and go, wow, I always say um and um, or I always interrupt my prospect after I ask them a question. And I could kind of tell that my prospect turned off because I asked him a question and then he started to respond. And I was so excited that I just stopped him mid-sentence when he was answering a question I asked him. Wow, I seem to interrupt people every single time I'm on the phone with them. Wow, mm, maybe that's the reason that they're not joining me. Or wait a minute, I never even asked these people to take a look at the business. I get all chitty chatty Kathy. And if your name's Kathy, sorry, I just had to say, I, I don't even know where that came from, but that's cool. And I don't even get to the point. I made 20 phone calls and I never got to the point one time. It's like, I was so afraid that I never got to the point. Maybe it's time for me to get to the point. Uh, you know, so there's the, there's, the good news is you guys look, there's room for improvement, number one, for all of us, including myself. And number two, everyone here can get better at this business. This is not brain surgery. All we do is talk to people about how they can improve the quality of their life and their health, and how about how they can improve their financial condition. How do you not get your butt out of bed every single morning like, okay, who do I get to talk to today? Whose life do I get to impact in a positive way today? Versus, oh, all right, let me reorganize my lead list. Let me reprioritize. Oh, I got to go do the laundry. Oh, wait a minute. I better go make myself a sandwich. It's this spinning cycle of avoidance procedure. I can, I can, there, uh, at the end of tonight, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely going to tell you how you can get rid of avoidance procedure. If you, if you are serious about like, I want to do more, but for whatever reason, I can't seem to get myself to do more, there's an avenue a guaranteed pathway for you to be able to do more. I'll share that with you at the end. But, you know, again, you get good by doing. You get good by, here's the thing. Like if you're mid, mid, mid conversation, if I'm, if I'm talking to Michael, let's say Michael was my prospect. If I'm mid conversation with Michael, I can't be thinking about how, how I'm doing. Like, am I saying it right? Like Todd, are you, what Todd, what like that? You, you're going to confuse yourself. You can't do that, but afterwards you can. But you, the only reason, the only way you can do it afterwards is if you record yourself. Like even like in every speaking contract that I do, and I just look, I just did a contract today. Just so you guys know, the contract I did today was for twenty five grand for ninety minutes. So I get paid a lot to go speak someplace. You guys get me for free. So in in the contract, it also says. 
I are, if if you are recording this event, I get a copy of my presentation on video on MP4. I do that in every speaking contract. Why? Because I want to review the footage and go, okay, I watch the footage of every training that I do. And I go, okay, well, I take notes. Okay, I could have done that a little bit differently. I, there's a room for improvement here. I tried this new story. Wow, the audience receptivity to that was amazing. Note to self, make sure I use that one again. Or I try, sometimes I try stuff new. In fact, I always do. I'll try, you know, bring in, like, again, I have no notes for tonight. This is totally off the cuff. There's no notepad. There's no nothing. There's no anything, nothing that I can look at to, to you know, gather a thought. So everything that's coming out of my mouth is coming from pure experience in the business. And, uh, you know, I could review this tonight. If, if Michael recorded this, I go, okay, well, I did that. Now, I, again, granted, I did this totally off the cuff. But what could I do differently in the future to make it even better, to make it, to make it more powerful, to make it more effective? I mean, I... I'm curious by those 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 that I can see on video. How many of you have never actually recorded a cross section of your calls? Be honest, just tell me. Show of hands. Never recorded your calls. Okay, a couple of you have. That's good, beautiful. But those of you that haven't, now is the time to start doing it. My question is: Are you if if you want to get good at this business? Which why would you even be on this Zoom if you didn't want to get good at this business? I mean. You could be watching whatever Thursday night football right now or do or watching a movie or taking a nap. You're here because for a reason, right? So if I if and think about this for a second. Why in the world would I ever want to lead you astray? It, it, can you think of any possible reason why I would want to give you bad advice? See, if I give you good advice and you get results, you're gonna be raving about me. You're gonna be like, I learned that from Todd Falcone. Oh, I, I started following this guy, I learned so much. I, and I hear that all the time from people that because I've been doing this for a long period of time. I have zero reason, there's no rational reason for me to lead you in the wrong direction. I want you to get results because if you get results, guess what? Word of mouth about me continues to go outward into the marketplace. So if I can help you improve your skills and you make more money, you're going to be like, cool. And honestly, the, the, the making money part is great for me. I love making money. But it, what's even more rewarding is like hearing from people like you that say, dude, you completely changed my life. Like, un, like I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't plugged in your trainings. I had a guy who bought my, uh, my new, this guy's like, close to seven figure income earner, bought my new little black book of scripts about like three weeks ago. He's actually on my website. I'll, I'll show that to you in a bit. And he, he's like, bro, you, he goes, I started following you 15 years ago. And I am where I am today because I followed your trainings. I followed your advice. So like, for example, me telling you to record yourself, you can blow me off. Totally. You can, you can just say, ah, whatever. But like, then that tells me you really don't want it. And what I found with people that are at the top of their craft, they, they work on their stuff. And what's unfortunate is people get involved in network marketing and they say that they want to get good, but then I'm, I'm like, cool, what are you doing to get good? And they're like, well, I'm doing it. Because like for a lot of people, it stops at day one. They get in and they go through the get started pack, welcome kid, getting started training. They get, you know, their one script that they got dialed in. And then they start doing and they they yeah, they might read books for personal development, but they're not really working. Intentional growth is different than reading a book or watching a video. It's like I'm like I won't read a book without going, what can I take from this book and apply into my business? I get marketing emails all the time. Like I'm on different email lists for different people. And when I get those, um, when I get those emails, I read the emails. I mean, these are emails where these people are trying to sell me something. But I'm like, what can I learn from this email? Like, like I don't know if any of you guys know who Frank Kern is. Frank Kern is not a network marketing guy. He's a direct selling or he's a direct marketer. He's like one of the greatest direct response copywriters. And Frank one time, not, I mean, this has happened many times, but I remember this one time, Frank sends me an email from his list, pitching me something. And I was like, and I watched the way he pitched me. And I was like, I wonder if I can use that in my business, teaching network marketers. 
and he has a thing called the four day cash machine. And I didn't buy the product, but I studied the emails. I rewrote the emails for my business. I went on a cruise. I made 15 grand while I was on a cruise. I would have never made the 15 grand if I didn't take what Frank put in front of my face, look at it and go, how can I apply this into my business? So like you guys have like, honestly, like this truly amazing offer, like, and that offer is not going to last forever. And even better yet, the fact that it's not, not going to last forever is power because there's true, genuine, authentic fear of loss. How many of you guys have bought something before because it was, you know, it was, it was going to be on sale and it's no longer going to be on sale? Like the sale was going to end. I mean, are you getting it at a disc? Like we all have. Like when you know you're going to lose out on something and you want that thing, you're going to get it now. And so if I'm in your shoes, I'm busting my butt, doing everything I can, as many exposures as I possibly can. Even if they're stinky exposures, it doesn't even matter because you're getting the repetition. Like here's the thing. If you do network marketing and you just prospect your tail off over time without doing all the other things, which are incredibly important, by the way, practicing, studying other successful people, asking questions of others, having really good people review perhaps what you're doing and give you good, honest feedback, you just doing it over and over and over again, you'll get better. You won't become exceptional, but you'll get better because you'll learn through those experiences. Like I, this dude I play golf with today, the guy's multi, multi-millionaire, he's an oil guy. And he sucks at golf. Like he is not good. He's never taken a golf lesson ever. Like, I mean, Michael, if you saw some of these shots, like his practice swing is pathetic. Like it's, I can't even watch his practice swing. He doesn't even follow through on his practice swing. He's all hunched over the way he, like, oh, like, I mean, so many shanks and like off the toe. And it was just so bad. And I gave, it's like, I gave him a tip. He was in a bunker and he didn't know how to get out of the bunker. I'm a pretty good bunker player getting out of the sand. And like, he has no concept of how to hit a golf ball out of a bunker. None. He's never taken a single lesson. He's played, I don't even know how many times. I played golf with him once about four months ago. I don't know how many times he's played since then, but he's not any better. I mean, so you could pick up a golf club and like, if he keeps doing what he's doing and he doesn't take lessons, he's always going to suck at golf. Like he's not good. He had to pick up so many times, like we had to shoot his ball down the fairway, like he was out in the trees. I mean, it was it was not good. But like, you know, I'm in the bunker with him. Like we I both happened to be in the bunker at the same time, in the same bunker. And I'm like, look, man, let me go first. Let me show you how to, ex now, I don't know if I'm going to execute it all, all right or not, but let me show you how you, this is how you do a bunker shot. Open up the face of the golf club. He's trying to like rotate his wrist. I'm like, no, dude, let the club slide in your hand until the club face is wide open at impact versus like straight on. And then when you hit, you're hitting the sand. So I'm giving him this, this little lesson. It took him three to do it, but he got out of the bunker better than he ever had because he had been in a bunch of bunkers before that. I hadn't given him any, any advice. So there's, there's room for improvement for you guys. I'm just telling you. You guys are in a great company. Uh... The only way, and I said this at the beginning, I'll say it again now, the only way to the money is you've got to be exposing. You've got to be able to summon up enough courage to push past your fears. you got to be okay with sucking until you get good. But you also have, the, have to have the commitment to get good. And I've given you guys some ammunition tonight, okay? Record yourself. You know, look back at conversations that you've had, if it's a text conversation or a Facebook conversation, see what you can pick up on. Maybe grab an expert who's way better than you and go, hey, man, here's a text conversation I had with this dude. What would you have done differently? Study other recruiters. Man, if I was in your company and there was a top recruiter, if I knew who the top recruiter was, man, I'm watching that person. What are they doing? What are they saying? How are they doing it? How are they saying it? What are they doing? Because if, if, if they're getting results and I'm not, then they're, 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 they must be doing something differently. Especially if you, if you know you're doing the work, I guess it, it, there's, two, there's either two things, either you're not doing the work and you don't deserve to get results if you don't do the work, or you're doing the work and you're not getting results. If you're doing the work and, and you honestly are like, man, I've pro taught, I've prospected 50 people a month the last three months and I've recruited no one. Well, there's a flaw in what you're doing. And so, you know, we've heard the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. 
if you keep doing the same thing and you're not changing what you're doing and you're not identifying where those leaks are in your boat, then you're going to keep getting the same result, which why would you do that? If you're like, I'm not getting any result, something has to change. That's why like recording yourself, for example, and listening to yourself, you can then, you as even not as an expert, you can pick up on some things, but an expert listening to that would be able to pick up on things that you couldn't even think about picking up on. It's like a guy that's never played golf and never held a golf club. Like this guy has never played golf in his life. He doesn't know what a golf swing is. He doesn't know the mechanics of a golf swing. He has no idea. None. So how, I mean, he, maybe he'll get a little bit better, but like, he's got to take lessons. He's got to get one-on-one -on -one coaching with, with a, somebody who is an expert in golf. That's his, and then he's got to go out there and take the things that that coach gave him and practice on those things until it becomes second nature to him. It's the same thing in this business. Okay. Now I've mentioned a couple things. I'm going to, I want to, I want to give you a couple of different resources real quick. Um, number one, if you're ever at a loss for words, like, I don't know what to say to this person. I have a script for that. Okay. I have the number one selling script book in the entire network marketing profession that just got completely rewrote over the last few months. It's called the little black book of scripts. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put um, in the comments, in the, I'll just put it in the chat real quick. There's two links in there because I'm going to tell you about this other thing. The Little Black Book of Scripts literally puts the words in your mouth for every possible situation you're going to find yourself in. Warm market, cold market, online, Facebook, in person, what to send somebody in an email or a text. I mean, I cover everything. In fact, I'll just say this. If you buy the script book, it's, I think it's 67 bucks on the site. And I provide audio training, teaching you how to use the scripts rather than just give you the training. Buy it. If you, if you, you and just dig into the whole thing for 30 days. If, 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 if in 30 days, you're like, I don't like you, Falcone, I will happily refund your money without asking a single question. I'm not going to guilt you. I'm not going to shame you. You send my support team an email, like, I don't like this guy or I don't like this stuff, doesn't work for me, bang, you got your money back. So you have nothing to risk and 100% to gain. And I'm just telling you that, that it is for any network, I think every single person in network marketing that's really trying to figure this game out should have a little black book. I mean, I've sold, I don't even know how many, like hundreds of thousands of units of the original, but I wrote that pre-internet, pre-social media. Plus I've learned a lot in the last 18 years since I wrote that. So we just released that like, maybe two weeks ago. Um, it's on the way, it's on, it's in the chat. It's in the, it's toddfalcone.com forward slash guide, G-U-I-D-E. The other thing is, and I want to, I'll, I'll end with this. For many years, uh, it's always frustrated me when I had team members that wanted to win, but couldn't get their butt in gear. Like they signed up. They, they joined the business. They paid $500 to join the business. They come to the conferences. They fly in and get hotels and then they still don't do anything. And I'm like, any of you experienced networkers here have had people like that. It's so frustrating. And I was like, man, how do we get people to do more? So I started in like, oh, four, I started to run accountability programs. Cause the thing is in this business, there is no accountability. Your whole life, you're held accountable by bosses, parents, and teachers. Try not showing up for your job on Monday. And then Tuesday and then Wednesday without using a whatever, P, what is it, a PTO, paid time off. I don't even know. I think that's right. PTO, vacation day, sick day. If, can you imagine if you pulled three straight no-show days without calling in? What is going to happen? You will get fired. That's the way the world works. But no, you won't do that. And you may come home every night complaining to mama or papa about how much you don't like your job, but you'll go the next day anyhow. Why? Because the consequence of you not showing up is so significant that it forces you to show up, even if you don't like it. And you vent to your spouse every night of the week. But then you look at this, this business that, that contains the mechanics of wealth leverage. And you're like, ah, what's another day of me not doing the business? I'm not making any money yet anyhow. You, wait, you... It's not linear consequences here. It's the compound effect of what will happen and what would happen if you took action today and tomorrow and the next day. The payoff is in the future. And it's an uncalculable figure. It's an incalculable figure. You can't possibly even think about like, well, if I brought this person in today, what could that lead to? Could lead to nothing or could lead to millions. You have no idea. So instead, we put it off for another day. If you are in a position where you think you could be doing more, 
And even if you're already active, this is not, I have seven figure income earners that do this. I have people that are completely stuck do this and everywhere in between. I've been running as a trainer a, every quarter since 2008, I think that's 16 years, a, a program called A-Team. The A stands for accountability. It is like hiring a personal fitness trainer, but for your business. So if you've never worked out with a personal fitness trainer one-on-one, -on -one, maybe like I got up this morning, I did, I did yoga yesterday and today. I do yoga in a class because if I do yoga out there on the landing, I will lay on my face. I will give up on myself. I know that about me. But if I'm surrounded like this morning, there's probably 25 women in the class and three dudes. I'm not going to be the sole dude laying on his face in child's pose when everybody else is in triangle pose trembling at the same time. So it's the... It's, and you guys know what I'm talking about. If you've ever done kickboxing, yoga, any kind of group spin, like you're not going to be the only one. It's embarrassing to lay on your face, so you push harder. And if you've ever worked out one-on-one -on -one with a personal fitness trainer, the, the trainer's standing over you. He's going, dude, you got two more in you. Push it. Come on, Falcone. Get it done. And so you do more. I've worked out with personal fitness trainers. I've worked out in, a lot in group fitness classes, and you always do more. That's what A-Team is but for your Asante business, okay? The details are on in the chat. It's toddfalcone.com forward slash team, T-E-A-M. We start in the first week of October. It runs for 12 weeks. This is the best building time of the year. You should be on the gas as we move through fourth quarter. I only allow 100 people in every A team, okay? As soon as we hit 100, the page changes. You're on a, on a waiting list. This is not something you would want to procrastinate over. If you're ready to step up your game, play your A game, get more done, I can guarantee you it's literally impossible for you to do less in your business. You will absolutely do more. You'll learn a ton. You'll develop a ton of confidence. You will learn how to track your revenue producing activities. And look, 16 years every quarter, I wouldn't run it if it didn't work. It's the longest standing group coaching program that exists in the entire network marketing profession. And there's no other trainer that's run a program like this for as long as I have. If you've never done a team, come and do it. Uh, you can go look at the page. There's some timed bonuses on there. I like to reward decision-making. I think on Sunday, one of those bonuses goes away and it's not some freebie bonus. These are like paid trainings that I do that if you were to go to my website, you'd pay for and uh, so if you're interested in doing more, I would encourage you to take a look at that. And I'll help you improve your skills. I'll help you improve your confidence. I will get you to do more. And this is too good of an opportunity with too, you know, too good. The products that you guys have, the impact that you're able to make with Asante is too big for you to be sitting on the sidelines. It's too big. You don't want to be sitting on the sidelines. You want to be in the game and playing the best game of your life. So anyhow. That's that's it for me tonight. I hope you guys got something good out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you guys. And um, yeah, back to you, Michael. Thank you so much, Todd. Always good information as always. I don't know if uh, anybody knows that Todd's been like at most of our events. He, he speaks at a lot of our events when we have them. And I've known him like forever. So, you know, we've been around this whole industry. This is almost about the same amount of time. I got a few more years on him, but... Uh, you know, he might be a better golfer in the sand than myself, but, you know, we'll find <laughs> out later. But uh, no, good, good, good stuff. Thank you, everybody. You know what? Um, what can I say? I mean, we follow up with Todd. There's not much to say after that because that's, you know, that's good stuff. Perfection, right? So, you know, I, I can tell you something that 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 uh, we have his first version of the little black book right at our office. So, <laughs> Danny, Danny looks at Danny's online here. Danny looks at it all the time. It's in Danny's office. So it's, it's, it's not, uh, I can tell you that uh, part of, um, it's not that you get the program, it's you use the program, right? You know, it's in Daniel's uh, office, but I can tell you one thing, there's no dust on it. Okay. Cause Danny looks at it a lot. So, Hey, Hey guys, you know what? We, we appreciate your time. We thank you so much for being with us. Keep our um, promotions in mind. That's going on until the 31st. And that's huge stuff, huge stuff. And you know what? I would tell everybody to get get his his revision of the Little Black Book because it it's helped even myself, you know? And, um, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and it's just good stuff. And, and some of the stuff is going to be refresher. It's like a refresher course, you know? So 
And, uh, you know, nobody's perfect in this space. Nobody, uh, you know, it's not like, oh, oh, gosh, there's this guy's walking up. What do I say? No, 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 no. It's always different, you know. So um, it's just engagement and uh, learning, learning his learning his different scripts and using them as a guide and, you know, reading them over and over again gives you that engagement and it's great. It's good stuff. So thank you so much, Todd. I'm sure we'll do it again next month. And um, until then, everybody, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your businesses. And um, we will see you again, hopefully Dr. Becky on Tuesday. I got to now I got to I'm into bribing now. So now I got to I got to do bribes with Becky. So I'm just kidding, but she's awesome. And uh, so good stuff. Good stuff. And as always, everything and you get, know how to reach us if you guys need any help. And, uh, you know, we all we will all see you guys again on another broadcast. And you all be blessed. And thank you again, Todd, for being here this evening. Thanks, My Todd. Pleasure. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thanks, Thanks all.